Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wondershare eDrawSoft channel. Have you ever wondered how objects in a software system interact with each other to perform specific tasks or how messages are exchanged between objects in a complex system? The secret lies in UML communication diagrams and today I'm going to show you exactly how to master them. In this video, I'll walk you through designing UML communication diagrams step by step using eDraw Max. By the end, you'll be able to map object interactions in any system from simple applications to complex enterprise systems with confidence and precision. So let's dive in. In the Unified Modeling Language, communication diagrams, formerly known as collaboration diagrams, are a type of interaction diagram that focuses on the interactions between objects in a system. These diagrams illustrate how objects communicate with each other to perform a specific task or achieve a particular goal. Communication diagrams are particularly useful for visualizing the flow of messages between objects, showing the sequence of interactions, and understanding the relationships between objects in a system. System. They're often used in conjunction with sequence diagrams, but while sequence diagrams focus on the chronological order of interactions, communication diagrams emphasize the relationships and structure of the objects involved. Now let's dive into key elements of a communication diagram. One, objects or lifelines. Objects are the primary entities in a communication diagram. They represent instances of classes or components that interact with each other. Each object is represented as a rectangle with the object's name and class separated by a colon, for example, user, customer. Objects act as participants in the interaction. Two, links. Links represent the connections between objects. They show the pathways through which messages are exchanged. Links are depicted as solid lines connecting the objects. These lines indicate that the objects can communicate with each other directly. Next, messages. Messages represent the communication between objects. They show the flow of information or requests from one object to another. Messages are labeled with a sequence number and a description of the action being performed. For example, login. The sequence number indicates the order in which the messages are sent. Four, sequence numbers. Sequence numbers are used to indicate the order in which messages are sent between objects. They help to visualize the chronological flow of interactions in the system. Sequence numbers are typically displayed as integers, one, two, three, etc., or in a nested format, 1.1, 1.2, to show hierarchical interactions. Five, self messages. Self messages occur when an object sends a message to itself. This is often used to represent internal processing or method calls within the same object. Self messages are depicted as arrows that loop back to the same object. Now let's dive deeper into the key symbols and notations used in creating a UML communication diagram. Each symbol plays a critical role in representing the interactions between objects in a system. We'll explore each one in detail, along with examples and visual representations. Here, the first symbol we're going to discuss is objects. An object is the fundamental building block of a communication diagram. It represents an instance of a class or component that participates in the interaction. Objects are depicted as rectangles with the object's name and class separated by a colon. This notation helps identify the role and type of the object in the system. Objects can represent physical entities, for example, a user or device, or logical entities, for example, a database or service. They act as the participants in the interaction, sending and receiving messages to achieve a specific goal. Next up, what we have is links. Links represent the connection between two objects, showing that they communicate with each other. Links are depicted as solid lines connecting the objects. These lines indicate the pathways through which messages are exchanged. Links are essential for illustrating the relationships between objects in a system. For example, a customer object might be linked to a payment gateway object to process payments. Now moving on to number three, messages. A message represents the communication between objects. It shows the flow of information or requests from one object to another. Messages are depicted as arrows pointing from the sender object to the receiver object labeled with a sequence number and a description of the action. Messages can represent various types of interactions, such as method calls, signals, or data exchanges. The sequence number indicates the order in which the messages are actually sent, helping to visualize the chronological flow of interactions. Next up, what we have is self-message. Self-message occurs when an object sends a message to itself. This is often used to represent internal processing or method calls within the same object. Self-messages are depicted as arrows that loop back to the same object. Self-messages are useful for showing internal logic or steps that an object performs independently. Now let us walk through the complete process of how to create your very own UML communication diagram using eDraw Max. 
a free to use diagramming tool that lets you create your UML communication diagram for free. First, open eDraw Max. You can click on new, then select UML communication diagram to start from scratch. Alternatively, you can browse through various templates of effective communication diagrams based on your requirements and start from there. For this tutorial, we'll choose to draw from a blank canvas to show you the entire process. Once you've selected the communication diagram option, you'll be presented with a blank canvas. To begin creating your diagram, you Use the symbol library on the left side of the screen. Click on the symbol icon next to the template section and in the pop-up window search for UML communication diagram symbols. You can scroll down to find the relevant symbols for objects, links, and messages. Finally, click add to my workbench to add these symbols to your library. Now that you have all the necessary symbols in your library, you can actually start building your communication diagram. Drag and drop the symbols onto the drawing page, use links to connect the objects, and add messages to show the flow of communication. Arrange the symbols to represent the interactions between objects in your system. You can then continue drawing your communication communication diagram by aligning and distributing the shapes. You can label each object and message with clear descriptive names. Use sequence numbers to indicate the order of interactions. You can also use different colors or patterns to identify specific parts of the diagram. Once you've finished drawing, you can get a better view of your diagram by deselecting rulers and grid lines. This will give you a much cleaner look at your communication diagram. Then select from the current page option to view the diagram in full screen, just like we do every time we finish. Once you finish drawing, you can get a better view of your diagram by deselecting rules, by deselecting rulers and grid lines. This will give you a cleaner look at your communication diagram. To save your file, click on file, then go to export. You can save it in commonly used file formats like Excel, Word, or PDF. To help you better understand communication diagrams, let's wrap up by showing you some very classic examples. These are really useful. Example number one, communication diagram for a login system. This communication diagram illustrates the interactions between various components in a login system. The system handles user authentication, session creation, and logging of successful login attempts. Let's break it down step by step. Objects and interactions. One, user. The user initiates the process by sending a one request, then two, the authentication service receives the login request and performs a check. Login valid attempt. If the login attempt is valid, it sends a login attempt valid message to the security system. Then the security system validates the user's credentials by sending a validate user credentials message to the user database. If the credentials are valid, then the security system sends a credentials valid message back to the authentication service. The security system also logs the successful login attempt by sending a log saved message to the logging system. The user database verifies the credentials and confirms their validity to the security system. The logging system records the successful login attempt and saves the log. Once the login is successful, the authentication service sends a create session token message to the session manager. The session manager generates a session token and sends a session token generated message back to the authentication service. Finally, the authentication service sends a login successful message to the user completing the process. That completes example one. Now example two is for a communication diagram for a library management system. Here's the authentication process. The librarian sends a request to log in to the authentication system. The authentication system processes that request and responds with login to system. The librarian then sends a request to access resources. The digital resource management system provides resource assessed. And if updates are needed, the librarian sends a request to update the resources. The librarian then sends a request to access resources and the audio visual resource management system processes the request and responds with resource assessed and responds with resource accessed. If updates are required, the librarian sends a request to update resources. The audio visual resource management system processes that request and confirms resource updated. The librarian sends a request to access book records. The book management system processes the request and responds with book accessed. If updates are required, the librarian sends a request to update book records and the book management system processes the request and confirms book updated. The librarian sends a request to access staff records. The staff management system processes the request and responds with staff accessed. If updates are required, the librarian sends a request to update staff records. The staff management system processes the request and confirms staff updated. 
For more classic examples, make sure to visit our template community. Just check the link in the description down below. And that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you so much for joining us in this tutorial on creating UML communication diagrams with Wondershare eDraw Max. In this tutorial, we have covered what communication diagrams are and why they matter, the key elements, including objects, links, messages, and sequence numbers, a step-by-step -step guide on how to create your own communication diagram in eDraw Max, and real-world examples to help you understand their practical applications. If there's another tutorial that you'd like to see, make sure to leave a comment down below requesting it, and we'll make sure to consider your request. Don't forget to subscribe for more eDraw Max tutorials and check the description for a link to try eDraw Max online or download it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.